Today I'm going to talk about the issues that are affecting the stock market, the price of stock, things in the economy that are headwinds or sort of pushing against stocks going up. One of those is uh, Sarah Kunst. She is the managing director and founder of Clio Capital in Silicon Valley. And she talks about uh, Apple having quite a bit of risk in it, downside risk. And that's significant because Apple uh, has been a bellwether. It has been resistant to a lot of downside pressure that other tech stocks have been subject to. Hi, I'm Ben Ripon. Today is October 31st, 2023. Welcome to my YouTube broadcast. As I said, I'm going to get into this interview that on CNBC, which is done with uh, Greg Branch and Sarah Kunst. Uh, I've never played either one of them before. Uh, they're both accomplished. Uh, Greg Branch is the uh, managing partner of Veritas, and Sarah Kunst has her own venture capital firm in Silicon Valley. Uh, both accomplished, and uh, both have some good insights. Uh, I listened carefully to both of them, and I thought, uh, they would be worth sharing with you. Greg Branch points out that I'll play him first, that this right now, this is um, October, this is still earnings season, the reporting of earnings by companies, big companies, and that the outlook does not look pretty. An economic recession, which we tend to think of, is not the same necessarily as an earnings recession. Now, when I heard him talk about an earnings recession, it reminded me so much of Mike Wilson, because we're going back the past year, Mike Wilson from Morgan Stanley, and I played that a lot, has repeatedly said that we're probably gonna face an earnings recession. Earnings are going down, and whatever happens to that from a um, perspective of um, you know, the cause of it is probably gonna be caused by earnings, not by other factors. So Sarah Kunst follows Greg Branch and she talks about uh, Apple among other things, but she says that from her perspective, now she's right in Silicon Valley, so Apple headquarters, not far from her. And so she gets the buzz of what's going on with Apple. And she's, she enumerates the items, the issues that are facing Apple stock. I was not aware of all of these. So I thought I would play them for you. Uh, again, I don't perceive that in any way she's an anti-Apple person, but she's just voicing that the, what has held Apple up among other tech stocks, among their peers, let's just say Google, Microsoft, Facebook, etc., what has held it up uh, is starting to break down. And that if, my opinion is that if Apple stock breaks down, the market breaks down. And further, not only if Apple breaks down, the tech sector breaks down. And the tech sector has had quite a bit of pressure but uh, Apple has resisted a lot of that pressure. So anyway, I'll just play this for you. It's an interesting piece by uh, Greg Branch and Sarah Kuntz. Take a listen. So what should investors do? Let's, gonna, let's talk about that with our A-list panel tonight. Clio Capital Managing Director Sarah Kunst is here and Veritas Financial Managing Partner and one of the biggest bears on Wall Street, Greg Branch, uh, is here also. Thank you both for joining Last Call. Greg, let me go to you first. Uh, you've had this bearish perspective. You look at these headlines that we're going to see next week. Uh, in addition to the Israel-Hamas war hanging sort of over everything, of all those news items that I just ticked off, what do you think is going to be the main driver next week? I think it's one of them that you haven't actually, and that is okay. the direction of earnings. That's the direction of earnings. And so there are two capitulations that I've been waiting for uh, and patiently waiting throughout the year for that downside thesis to play out. The first was that we would get to a terminal rate, that we would get common agreement on a terminal rate 
uh, that we would get, that we would see going forward. For the larger part of a year, there was a lot of resistance to is it three percent, is it four percent? And you'll remember that over a year ago, I said it would, it would likely be six. Well, we're within fifty to seventy-five basis points of that right now. So I'm not sure it's a big long-term deal if they raise another twenty-five or fifty basis points from here. We're in that neighborhood already, so I'll call that capitulation. Where we don't have capitulation yet, and what forebodes more downside is the direction of earnings. We're getting there. About 30 days ago, the growth rate for pro projected for the fourth quarter was 8%. Recall that I've been saying I see no pathway to 8% earnings growth in the fourth quarter, nor 12% earnings growth for 2024. With an environment this hostile to earnings, because remember, we haven't felt the full bite of the 550 basis points that they have raised interest rates. And so that's still ahead of us. And yeah. so I did not see with that ahead of us, with liquidity still decreasing and with businesses and consumers really quite a bit, probably more than most would admit, I didn't see that as, as an environment that would encourage earnings growth. So we still have yet to have that capitulation. I think that's what's going to matter. Consensus is now about three full points below for fourth quarter where they were 30 days ago. And I think that that's a good sign. Sarah, let me get your thoughts here. Speaking of bites, right, we've got Apple earnings coming up next week. Uh, some of the tea leaves as people look at Apple, maybe not so hot for a blockbuster quarter for them. Uh, what are you seeing in terms of the earning picture looking ahead to next week? Yeah, I mean, all is is not well in Cupertino. I think that, you know, certainly they, they've been down alongside the overall market this week. But the reality is, you know, there's some unique drivers taking that down. You know, we have things like the, the news out of the Apple Watch, you know, patent case around some of that that uh, blood oxygen content, that means that they might not be able to, to sell the new Apple Watch uh, in the US right away. And you know that's less than 10% of their revenue, but that's not great given that they haven't had a hot new product in quite a while. You know We're looking into 24 before the Vision Pro headset comes out and we'll have to wait and see if they have a killer use case for that and can get sales numbers. And you know a lot of people are unhappy with their new iPhones, that the sales haven't been super strong. The people buying them are not happy with the battery life and some of those issues. And so, you know, it's not been a great week for Tim Cook. Greg, let me ask you this. I mean, so many analysts, including yourself, I believe, uh, at the beginning of this year, were saying 2023 is going to be the year where we have a recession. It's all set up for that. And, and that just didn't play out. I mean, we're not all the way at the end of the year, but that doesn't seem like it's going to play out for 2023. Uh, you know, you could you could make the joke that uh, everything is great about this economy except the stock market right now. What do you think is out there holding this economy up despite all those predictions that we've that we were going to see this recession? Look, you're, you're right. And, and the distinction I'll make is that we don't necessarily need to have an economic recession to have an earnings recession. And we've certainly been in an earnings recession with four quarters of negative earnings growth. If it holds right now, we're at 2.7% earnings growth for this quarter, uh, a, a, a significant surprise, I would say, based on where we were 30 days ago, where the consensus was at a 40 basis point contraction. Uh, but going forward, you know, look, I, I think for these earnings to sustain, we need to see the consumer in better shape than they are. When we saw the GDP number, all the data we, we see coming out about retail and, and spending suggests that we're doing this from savings and we're doing this from the consumer levering up. When you see a default rate of 7% on new credit cards and you see people taking out new credit cards at a rolling interest rate of about 25% record highs, that does not suggest a consumer with a strong balance sheet. And so despite all the stimulus that we've put into the system this year to prop up the consumer and prop up the economy, there's limited runway, probably more than we'd like in an election year, but limited yeah. nonetheless. Yeah, and that's so what, that's what we some, didn't even think about yet is the is the fact of an election year looming next year. That's always something to watch. And we've got a lot, a lot to watch for, as you guys both say. Next, I want to play for you a piece by uh, Roger Altman being interviewed by Joe Kernan. And he's been involved. Roger Altman is a financial guy, has been on Wall Street, uh, accomplished. He's also been involved with the Treasury Department. And uh, so he's on the political side, been part of his life on the political side uh, with Treasury and then also with uh, his own uh, investment firm, uh, Evercore. So he's a founder and executive chairman of uh, Evercore. Um, he points out he sees 
he's thinking like, okay, if we just came here, I don't know the words he used, but if we came here from outer space, we didn't know anything about what's going on, and we just landed here, we'd look around and we would be pretty pessimistic, pretty negative about the market. He said the issues, the factors out there are inflation, interest rates, fiscal policy, which I will say is debt, and geopolitical risk, which among the geo areas of geopolitical risk would be the Middle East war. Uh, so when you look at all of those, the combination of all of that, when I read things in, on the news about all of this, I just think, wow, how could the stock market ever go up in the face of all of this? But somehow, for some periods of time, it does. Now, this past week and this past month, the market has, generally speaking, gone down, and just definitely this past week. But for actually, for about three, oh, for about three months, uh, yeah, about three months now, the market has been generally going down. And but in those periods of time, the, it actually goes up for a while, maybe a week or a couple of weeks, something like that and then it collapses and falls back down, very similar to the way it did last year. So the, the boost that the stock market got early in the year with the um, focus on artificial intelligence uh, that pushed up NVIDIA stock and other uh, AI stocks, uh, that has worn off, it appears. And so now the tech stocks are starting to break down and the market in general is breaking down. So take a listen to Rog Roger Altman and his assessment. He's been around a long time, so he's got, I think, a, a balanced perspective and uh, does not have an ax to grind. Uh, but take a listen to this. Bring in uh, Roger Altman, founder and senior chairman of Evercore. We don't need to go into what we we're just talking about, but I thank you for this whole relationship. You knew uh, you were a Swifty long ago, before any of us were, right? 15 years, 20 years ago you were a Swiss. I'm a huge fan. Yeah? I love her. She's amazing. She is. Um, interest rates, the Fed, wars. Um, is this a time to be, some, some of the, the best money manager we, managers we know have said, this is just really difficult right now. Well, step way, way back for a minute. Uh, imagine the four of us on the set had left the planet for two years, had no connectivity, had just returned. And we look at the structure of open market interest rates, medium and longer term interest rates. That might not be the first thing I looked at. Well, maybe. <laughs> you, look, you look at the path of monetary policy. Yeah. You look at the fiscal trajectory of the United States. Rates. And you look at geopolitical risk right now. Right. And you say to yourself, are these four factors conducive for investing, for equity investing? And the answer is no. When was Biden elected? Well, Biden took office in 2021. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's exactly <laughs> two years ago. You're not making a good case for your side Well, that's three years ago. <laughs> but, but if you go off through each of those factors, like, you know, there's been a sea change, quoting hard marks, in the structure of interest rates. And I think we're going to look back at the last 15 years, beginning with 2008, as an anomaly, and that what's going on now is essentially a reversion to normalcy. Mm -hmm. But it's tremendously uh, 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 important because internal rates of return are going to be declining, whether that's corporate or sponsor rates. Um, the incentives for investing at the margin are pro-fixed income. And it's, it's, just a, it's just a huge change. And then three, four months ago, six months ago, we would have been talking about the prospect for cuts of the federal funds rate. The market thought there'd be cuts, uh, multiple cuts actually, starting around now. And of course, that's gone. Uh, you look at this absolutely stunning third quarter growth figure, 4.9%. That's mind blowing, I think. Right. And, and obviously, the Fed is going to be higher for much longer. I don't think that in this coming week we're going to see an increase, but I think it's going to be steady as she goes for a long time. Next, I want to play a piece by Tony Dwyer. He's the um, economic uh, advisor um, to can accord genuity, and they're a worldwide 
uh, financial firm, certainly uh, based in Canada and with offices in the U.S. And they, the reason I focused on this because I, I got to know him last year at the uh, Active Investment Manager Conference, and he was a speaker there, and he, I was impressed by him. Uh, he's very sharp. Uh, balance doesn't tend to lean bearish or bullish, but uh, calls it the way he sees it. But in his assessment, he says, based on his view, which he's giving to his company, they hire him to do this, that what do you see? Where are we headed? He says for the next, I'm going to paraphrase and say, the next couple of quarters, we are headed into a recession. Now, I just played this piece um, that talked about earnings recession. Maybe it is an earnings recession, but recession means a couple of quarters in a row of contraction. So, again, I, my, my sense was he's being uh, honest and uh, calling it the way he sees it. But So take a listen to Tony Dwyer. Our next guest says expect rates to stay, quote, higher for shorter. Joining us now, Canna Corgenuity's Tony Dwyer. Tony, it's great to have you on. What do you mean by that? Mr. Morgan, the, our whole case this year was that a soft landing economic scenario is the worst case scenario because it does create that higher interest rate environment. We've seen a 25% increase in, in rates on the long, intermediate and long end just over the last, since mid-September. That ensures a recession rather than debate whether you're going to go into one because that spike means you're going to have that much more of a slowdown in economic activity. So at some point, the higher you go on rates, the quicker it's going to shut down economic activity and the faster it's going to create to the other side of the mountain in rates. So you don't think a soft landing is in the cards? No, I don't. I, it would be historically unique on the leading economic indicators, on money. So, uh, there's so many different areas that I see, and I, I understand that the unemployment rate is still low, but it's four-tenths of a percent off the low. Anytime you've been five-tenths of a percent off the cycle low, it's been right before or in a recession. So I think, you know, between now and the first quarter, we're going to be in an economic recession. Most stocks reflect it. So to kind of spin off of the T Tony Dwyer comments, I wanted to play a piece by an interview with uh, Becky Quick and Mohamed El Arian. Now, last week, I also played a piece from Mohamed El Arian, and I often do this because he is so good. He is so has insights, and I think that's why they have him on all the time, and Bloomberg does the same thing. The reason is because he is just, he's very insightful. He comes up with thoughts that others don't seem to have. Uh, he says, and this is correct, based on the uh, gross domestic product a report being a growth uh, in the U.S. came out last week, a growth of 3.9 percent, very strong indication that the economy is strong and resilient. That's good news, but good news means bad news. And what, what I'm saying is that with a strong U.S. gross domestic product economic report, uh, the what it means is it gives the Federal Reserve, the Fed, permission to hike interest rates even more. So with this kind of report, my assessment is we will probably have at least one more hike. And there are people who are saying we could have a couple of more hikes. And what's interesting is when you go back a year ago, they were saying by this time, we will start to have rate cuts, pauses and then rate cuts. And here we are looking at continuing rate hikes because the hikes that they have provided in uh, in this past year have not seemed to have much of an effect on the economy certain parts of it but the economy the numbers themselves are saying the economy is relatively strong and with <laughs> we've had 11 rate hikes so with all of those rate hikes you would think okay, we're, we're, the, the economy is going to start to slow down. The numbers don't show it. So here we are facing probably more rate hikes. When there is always a delayed effect between rate hikes and the slowing down of the economy and vice versa. So it, 
I don't know when this is going to happen, but at some point, if you raise interest rates enough, which shows up in credit cards and mortgages and, of course, the interest we're paying on our own debt as a country and other countries follow suit, you eventually do put the brakes on the economy. And what they're hoping for is a soft landing, not a hard landing, so that the economy will slow down, gradually slow down enough so that at some point they can start to ease off the brakes and, the econ and, and allow interest rates to come back down and the economy will do well. It doesn't seem to be working that way. So Mohammed El Arian has got uh, his view on this and uh, he sees a uh, recession ahead of us. He says probably in 2024. He's cautious in how he says this, but uh, that would be my take is in sometime in 2024, we're going to see a recession. So take a listen to Becky Quick and Mohammed El Arian. Investors are paying close attention to the slide in technology stocks and the volatility in the Treasury markets. And joining us right now to talk more about that is Mohammed El Arian. He is chief economic advisor at Allianz. He's also the president of Queens College at Cambridge University and the co-author of the new book, Permacrisis, A Plan to Fix a Fractured World. Uh, Mohammed, let's just talk, first of all, about the economy, because we've got the GDP coming out uh, in just about, I don't know, less than an hour's time from now. That's expected to be a strong number, but there are so many questions swirling about the economy. Where, where do you think we stand right now? Morning, Becky. I think the number is going to highlight two things. One is U.S. exceptionalism continues. Not only is it going to be double, more than double the rate of 2.1 percent for second quarter, but it outpaces all other advanced economies. The U.S. has been the growth engine for the world. It also highlights the challenges the Fed faces. But what we should not do is take this as a signal of the all clear for 2024. Um, you know, as you know, I've always pushed back on the notion that we would have a recession in 2023. I'm a little bit worried about 2024. Early 2024, late 2024. How do you see this playing out? It's hard to tell. I mean, we have first the rundown in savings. That's a big issue. Secondly, what's been happening in the interest rate market is really problematic. It's problematic for businesses, it's problematic for governments, for the Fed, it's problematic for households, and that is a significant headwind to economic activity. The final piece I want to play is a short piece but done by Joe Kernan interviewing Kamal Sri Kumar. And he is a um, financial guy, uh, studies the markets, and he says, and, I, and he's very blunt, says it uh, politely, but it's blunt, and that is the Fed is out of control. They don't know what to do next. Well, those are harsh words, but if you look at the policy and, and the, the statements that they make, you... I think you're, he's right. I think they're probably scratching their heads going, um, we're doing what we think we should do, and it's really not working. This is not inconsistent with Mohammed Al Arian and the others that I've played, Roger Altman, et cetera, and, but it's just a different take on it. He, the consequences of what he says is that, okay, he said this last week. So he says in the next four to five weeks, something will break, something will break. And he even says, maybe it's a bank or something like that. I don't know what it is, but I think if, if we are headed into a recession and the uh, impact of, of increased interest rates is going to, to show up, something breaking makes sense. So uh, I think you'll enjoy this. Take a listen to uh, Joe Kernan and Kamal Srikumar. With the 10-year Treasury above 5% for the first time in 16 years, let's bring in uh, Kamal Sri Kumar, president of Sri Kumar Global Strategies, uh, and get his view on what he thinks is going on. Sri, we, uh, and I know you watch, and we've been talking, and we've used terms like untethered and unmoored, and I, I think that's what you want to focus on, because there could be some, um, some I, I guess, somewhat disturbing outcomes 
if the Fed has lost control of its ability uh, to, to set long rates. We've never believed they could set long rates, but for a while it looked like it was all orderly. They haven't raised rates in a while, and we've had, what, 80 basis points, 70 basis point increase in the 10-year. That, that could be troubling, and it is to you. Absolutely. I put out a report on Saturday, Joe, saying precisely that for the first time, you have Jerome Powell, who has had never been doubtful as to what he did, even though he has been sometimes wrong on expectations of inflation and interest rates, finally to, said in his Economic Club of New York uh, talk, as well as in the Q&A session, that he did not know what is causing the higher bond yields. He attributes that to term premiums. The term premiums are not measurable. And therefore, essentially, the Fed chairman comes down to saying, I don't know what it is. And when he said that, I said, we are in completely uncharted territory. Things are going to go worse next week because of the fact that the Fed is totally out of control and they don't know what to do next. So you are absolutely correct. I think unintended consequences are going to happen. I've been saying that on your show for quite some time, whether it be a huge bank failure whether it should be pension funds losing a lot of money, commercial real estate suddenly worsening, or a CLO, commercial uh, loan market, and uh, uh, levered obligations having difficulty, somewhere things are going to break. And rather than expecting three to six months, I'm going to say within the next four or five weeks. So down in the basement of the bank, some guy is down there, and the bank banker, let's say he's the president of the bank, takes his guest down and says, and this is where we adjust interest rates. When I saw this, I thought, okay, the guy's putting the screws to who? To you and me. They're not putting the screws to the wealthy. Those people don't feel it or don't feel it much, but the average person feels the impact of interest rates. You may not have borrowed any money, you may own everything you have, but you still feel the impact of interest rates. Those who have credit card debt uh, feel it a lot. Uh, I saw something that said that the retailers, retailers have their own credit cards. Interest rates on retailers' credit cards are 30%. 30. And Visa and MasterCard and I guess American Express, theirs are around 25%. So when you make a minimum payment, you're not even covering the interest. And how many people are being squeezed with food prices and other things that they buy to the point where they have to borrow money they're using credit cards and they're going further and further in debt because they're making their minimum payments in many cases and that's not enough. The interest is outstripping that. So the, my point of playing some of these pieces is to say, when does this show up? When does it affect? Maybe it doesn't affect you and me directly, but it affects other people around us and by indirectly comes back and affects all of us. Okay, thank you for watching. If you have comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you.